This video is entitled PERT Diagram or PERT Diagram. It goes with Chapter 5 during the course Project Management for Technology. I'm Dr. James Renault at Shawnee State University, and I'll be taking you through this video presentation. In this video, we will talk about what a PERT diagram is. We'll talk about the very specific PERT node shape that I want you to use. We'll talk about how to calculate the variables or the numbers early start, early finish, late start, late finish, and slack or float, as some people call it. And we will draw a PERT diagram and go through another PERT diagram as a sample so that you're fully comfortable with the PERT diagram. The PERT diagram really is just an activity on node network diagram, but instead of using a circle or instead of using a rectangle, use a special shape. Um, and the shape I would like you to use is this seven segment box as defined here in on this slide. You will sometimes see PERT diagrams done with boxes that are different than this. Different drawing programs use different boxes, but this is the box that I would like to show you and is, in my opinion, uh, well, is, is a standard that you will see in lots of texts and other, other references in dealing with the PERT diagram. I'm gonna go through and define each of these things on the box in the next, next slide. So in the PERT node rectangle, you saw that there was the task where you put the task ID or the task name or both. You saw that the duration was up in the top center and, and that's just the duration and whatever units you're doing your diagram in, whether it be days or hours or weeks or whatever. Um, the boxes that you're not familiar with though, we, we wanna define what each of them mean. And the early start, the upper, upper corner is the earliest time that the work package may begin. The very first one or the ones that start the network diagram would begin with the number one. So for the task or tasks that are starting the network, you can put a one in for early start as soon as you create the node. Early finish is the earliest moment or the earliest date that we can finish a work package, that a work package could be finished. For each work package, it's calculated by early start plus duration minus one. And we'll see how that works. Late finish, I'm going to skip down to the fourth one and then I'm going to come back up to the third one. Late finish, the bottom um, corner, is the latest that a work package may finish without affecting the critical path. The latest that a work package can finish without affecting or changing the critical path. We use the late finish to calculate the late start. Late start is the latest a work package may start without changing the critical path. And for each node, it's calculated as late finish minus duration plus one. The last number on the chart, and it's the one in the bottom center, is something we call slack or float, depending upon who, who uses it. And both, both uh, are used in industry a lot. So just use them both, and we, we use them interchangeably. Slack is basically the difference between early start and early finish. So it's the number of days that we have wiggle room of when we can start that task without messing up our critical path, without making our project go too long or go longer. Um, items that are on the critical path, items that, that are absolutely on the critical path, as we saw, would have a slack of zero because their early start and early late start, their early finish and late finish would be the same, so they would have a slack of zero. So slack is just the difference between early start and late start or early finish and late finish. So the first step in drawing a PERT diagram, the way I want you to, is to basically draw an activity on node diagram using the PERT shape. Place the task name or task ID, the duration, 
and one for the early start on the first work package or work packages. So you can see that I put the box here, I put the task name, I put the duration, and on that very first one over there, I put a one for early start. And now we'll go through a second pass to add more information. So you can see that I've now added early start to all of the other tasks in the network. The early start is calculated by finding the early start plus duration of the predecessors, and you put the latest of those. So you can see that on box B, 1 plus 3 is 4. So if we spend three days, day 1, 2, and 3 on task A, then we can start B at the earliest on day 4. The same with task C. Task C can be started on day 4. Because we're going to work day 4 and day 5 on task C, um, D could start on day 6. And um, day 6, uh, task D, will work on it for day 6, day 7, day 8, day 9, day 10, day 11, day 12, 7 days, which means that the earliest, the latest early start that we can do E is 13. Even though, if you add 4 plus 4 from B, it's 8. But as I said, we use the latest early start plus duration of the predecessor tasks. So that's why for E, we have an early start of 13. Now that we've calculated early starts, let's calculate early finishes. And early finishes, we basically just go to each box and take the early start plus the duration minus one and write that as the early finish. So you can see I went through the whole network and just took the this plus this minus one is this. Because think about this. We start on day 13, work on day 13, work on day 14, work on day 15. So we will finish it on day 15, at the end of day 15. And that's what that represents. We start it on the morning of the 13th end on the day of the 15th, end to, and complete it on the end of the 15th day. Also, whatever your work package is here at the very end of the job, all of your, your finite, your, your finishing work packages, you take this early finish and copy it down as the late finish. And then we're going to work backwards through the diagram populating late finishes in our next slide. So to calculate the late finishes, we start at the end of the diagram and work our way backwards, work our way backwards. So 15 minus 3 would be 12, and you see the 12 there and also the 12 up at B. 12 minus 7 would be 5, you see that on C. 5 minus 2 is 3, but when we do B, 12 minus 4 would be 12, 9, 8. So the, uh, we could, because we use the earliest of the successors, the earliest of the ones that come after, that would require us to take the uh, 5 minus 2 on C and put that on A. So the late finish is 3 for A working backwards through the network diagram, calculating late finishes. Now that we've calculated late finishes, let's go through and calculate late starts by using the formula late finish minus duration plus 1 for each work package. So you can see 15 minus 3 plus 1 is 13, 12 minus 7 plus 1 is 6, 12 minus 4 is 9, uh, plus 1 is 9, and you can just go through each of the each of the tasks and populate late start. Now that late start is calculated, early start, early finish, late start, late finish have all been calculated. The last thing to calculate is slack, which is here. Basically, we take early finish and early start and early finish and subtract them, and that becomes the slack. You could also do late start and late finish. That's a good way to check to make sure 
that you've calculated everything correctly. So 13 minus 13 is 0. 6 minus 6 is 0. B, 4 minus 9 is 5. C, 4 minus 4 is 0. And A, 1 minus 1 is 0. The network nodes on the critical path will have a slack or float of 0. The nodes on the critical path will have a slack of 0. So you don't have to go through and calculate which what the length through each of the paths are and figure out the total length of ACD. Well, you know that already because the length of ACDE is 15. The length of ABE isn't 15. It's five shorter than that. So that's kind of what this is saying. And, and I highlighted the arrows by, by making the line width wider to mark and to denote the critical path in this network diagram. So that's the process and all of the steps of moving forward and backward, forward and backward through the network diagram until you can complete all of the boxes, fill in all the numbers for early start, early finish, late start, late finish, slack, duration, and path. Here's another example PERT diagram. Now, this one is a little bit more complex than the first one I did. And the reason it's a little bit more complex is you can see up above in the definition that both A and B have no prerequisite. So to eliminate the confusion, we need to have a node called start that both A and B would feed off of. We also see that... Uh, no task is dependent upon E finishing. Um, F is um, dependent. See, no, no task is dependent upon E. No task is dependent upon G to finish. And no task is dependent upon C to finish, looking at the network diagram. So we actually have three tasks that can be done right up to the very end. So that's why I had to add an end to this diagram to denote that there, the, the, the three t different tasks could all be done right up at the very end. So we go through and assign ones to, the, to A and B because they're the beginning. We then calculated the early finishes through the network diagram, early starts through the network diagram. We then back calculated the early finishes. I then came here and said, well, 15 is the latest early finish. So I made that the late start here, here, there, and then I calculated the, or does the late finishes. I then calculated the late finishes, and then I calculated all the late starts and calculated the slacks. And we can see that the critical path through this network is A, B, F, G. As we move from start, no, not ADFG, it's BDFG, isn't it? We go from start to B to D to F to G, and you can see slacks of zero, where task A has a slack of one, so it can slide back and forth, either starting on the first week or the second week, without causing any problems to the, to the project. Task E could start anywhere between the ninth and twelfth week, and task C can start anywhere between the fourth and the twelfth week. Um, so that we have, we can schedule our employees better knowing all of this with early start, early finish, late start, late finish, and slack. This concludes the video on drawing PERT diagrams. This presentation is copyright 2020 by James M. Renault, PhD. You can contact me at jrenault at shawnee.edu with any questions, especially if you found an error or anything. This work is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution, non-commercial share like 4.0 international license. And I would like to close with thank you for watching.